So now in this video we're going to look at a latching relay. So this is actually a latching relay. A coil latching relay, 5 volts. That 5 volts is to switch the position of the relay. It can actually power, a, or it doesn't power a load, but it can switch a 30 volt uh, 2 amp load and that's maximum. You probably want to keep it about half of that. Or 125 volts uh, 1 amp load. So that's on there. Again, you'd probably want to keep the current down. To uh, prevent it from overheating but in any case that is its rate of value so it can switch a lot more than what it is needed to switch and right now you can see one of the LEDs is on and so a lot of relays this one's non uh, latching it has one position that it prefers so if you're not energizing it then uh, one in this case an LED but uh, one of the switches will be closed usually and uh, there's other relays but a lot of them have a uh, normally closed and normally open switch this just has one that bounces back and forth we'll look at that and then when you energize it it switches the normally open switch into the closed position as long as you energize it and so I've been buying latching relays but the uh, modules so the modules have a relay on it and other circuitry it uses the circuitry to latch it which takes energy so this one's nice it's an actual latching relay we just give it a, uh, oh, I don't have this to the positive rail. There we go. I yanked out the positive rail part. So, there we go. We just give it a pulse. It changes. We release the the wires instantly, pretty much. And it holds its position. And it's going to hold its position because it's mechanically locked into place right now. And so, until we give the other coil a pulse. And so, also, let's, uh, before I forget, this comes loose, so you may see that uh, that goes out. So if this is not on the board just right, the uh, pins just kind of lose connection. They're not very long, so nothing wrong with the relay itself. It's just the connection. Maybe that uh, pin I have it in in the board is uh, kind of messed up too. But in any case, you may see that kind of flicker once in a while. It's just a breadboard connection. So we do have the diodes here. Of course, it has two coils and coils are basically inductors and that's how it moves the uh, switch it builds up a magnetic field and so it first fights current so you notice the diodes are reverse bias in this setup so when I connect negative there positive there the coil does have resistance also so ultimately it limits current we can go directly to the power supply probably don't want to do it for terribly long and uh, you'd want to review the data sheet and everything for how long you can keep a constant connection but this one is made for brief connections as you can see there so so we got positive to the cathode negative to the anode so the power supply will not put current through the diode the diode just blocks it it lets the current go through the coil as if the diode does not exist now when we release it as I said the uh, coil kind of fights current flowing through it at first and it builds up a magnetic field and keeps letting more and more current go through it until its resistance or other circuitry limits the current after that point so it starts conducting as good as it can you release in this case the jumpers and current keeps flowing that magnetic field collapses and it keeps current flowing and the way to do that is the more resistance you got the higher the voltage has to go to keep the current going and it does that while the magnetic field collapses and as the magnetic field collapses it runs out of energy current ultimately stops at some point but the current's flowing this way we're going to go positive and negative it's flowing that way it wants to keep flowing that way we open the circuit it can flow through the diode until that energy runs out so it doesn't have to raise the voltage. It easily goes through the diode in uh, this direction once you remove the uh, power supply. Because the power supply is going to keep it moving there as long as you keep it applied. You release the power supply and then it has no choice really but to go through the uh, diode like that. So that's why you'll always want to use some kind of protection from that inductive kickback. It doesn't necessarily have to be a diode, but diodes are most commonly used. We're going to Look at that a little bit more coming up. So in any case, we got that out of the way. Let's go back to uh, this component. So there is a switch on that side and a switch 
on that side. We'll look at the uh, pins coming up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take uh, this jumper here. Well, first I can take uh, the LED. So I'm going to wire the LED the same as that one, as far as the LED is concerned. So we have a gap between, we got two coils there, a gap. So there's a breadboard gap also at the power rail. That makes it easy. So right here we have the common. You can see the negative rail, or uh, the jumper there to the negative rail. So we go up two more. That's where I want to put the cathode, right there. And uh, a uh, resistor, that resistor up there to the uh, positive rail to power it. i got to move this over a little bit. So there's a switch on, on both sides, and we attach this. But now this LED will not come on because these two switches are not connected to each other. Electrically, they are isolated. And so we take another jumper to the negative rail. Now it turns on. So it's the exact same setup, but uh, they're completely independent of each other. So we have two independent switches, and so that's the double pull part of it, and then double throw. Either uh, we saw when we had the same side, that LED was on, or that LED was on. So each one of the uh, poles could go into two positions and have uh, an on circuit right there. But uh, yeah, we can turn them both on or uh, turn them both off. And we can also move uh, this LED up here. So there's a bunch of uh, wiring options. So we're at the uh, top pin there. And we'll look at the pins coming up. Right there. So we were switching them both over there. So it was a single pull, basically, double throw setup. Now we have a uh, double pull. One there and one there, and a double throw on both sides right there. So we can set that up. Now let's also look at another thing. So I'm going to remove the diodes. As I said, you should protect any inductor from inductive kickback in some way or another. We're going to not do that now because we're only dealing with 5 volts and there's about 128 ohms of resistance, I believe, through the coils. And so some coils do not have that much resistance. They let practically any current that you uh, will let through them. And you'll have to limit current otherwise. These do limit current a bit. So we're a bit safer. But in any case, we can just go directly to the coils. And uh, it's not a good idea. But for demonstration purposes, it's not end of the world. So we can switch directly. So we're only going to go to this bottom one right there. And let's uh, let's zoom in. So. We switched by putting negative there and positive there. Let's go back. Like, uh, there we go. I was hitting plastic instead of metal. And then switch back. So we got that. Now let's uh, switch polarity and come here. This is why we need to get rid of the diodes. If we connected the polarity like this with the diodes there, we would have short circuited it. So we can go and uh, tangling up the uh, jumpers. So we can go polarity one way with the same coil to uh, switch it and then swap the polarity of the same coil, the polarity of the power supply to the coil to, uh, to switch it back. So we can do that too. But as I said before, with the diode, it's only letting, it's going to let current go through directly with one way we'll short circuit. So my bench power supply, I have current limited to a safe level. It will only output like one amp of current or something maximum. And so uh, if you don't have uh, reverse protection, uh, then you may fry something that is sensitive to that. In fact, that's uh, what this is going to be. This uh, circuitry up there is uh, reverse uh, power supply protection. And so I got a lot more work to do on it though. But in any case, that is about it. For the operation it's actually pretty straightforward the problem has been with as I just said it's really clear what the latching means on here and with this one you got to keep it powered to keep it in the on position for one of the switches you have to keep current going through it and it's a relatively high amount of uh, current for something you want on a long time so we're gonna flip this you can see there's two pins down there that's the uh, two coils 
So we got one coil across that bottom one, and then one coil across there. Then we have the common. As we saw before, I don't have that jumper there We uh, anymore. We had a jumper to, to one of them, and then the jumper to the other one. So that one was to that side, and that one was to that side. We already looked at how they are independent of each other. This one will power either that pin, or will give a connection to either that pin or that pin, but not to one of those two. It didn't matter if that wasn't connected, but this one was, the uh, LED just stayed off, no matter what. And then same with uh, this one over here. This one is either connected to that one, and at the same time, that one's connected to that one. We switch the uh, position of the relay, then that will be connected up there, plus that one will be connected there. So we have two poles, and then there's two positions, two throws right there. If we got rid of one of these pins, and we can wire up a circuit like this, then it would just have an open connection or it would connect to that pin if that one didn't exist. But we do have two uh, positions that it can go to, so that's double throw right there. If it could only go to open or close, that would be a single throw. So in any case, that's a little complicated to explain. There's all kinds of diagrams out there to show the different uh, setups. But in any case, you can see here, we got two pins at the bottom. So if I go right there, I know they'll land there. And then there's a gap and then a pin. So a pin up there and then a gap. So I know I can skip that. And then a pin and then a, another gap and then another pin. So it's not too bad to wire these up once you realize other than these two right there, there's a gap between all the pins. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll probably come up with some diagrams again. I've been running into some confusing stuff, and that's mostly because I've been hitting, I've been looking at a whole bunch of relays that say they are latching relays. So, I've been expecting what we got here, a latching relay. And the module works just like this. It locks into position. But the relay doesn't lock into position. The module has to keep supplying power to the relay. And that's just wasted power, in my opinion. I don't know why they make them like that. But in any case, I'm running into some bumps. And I don't spend a lot of time on this, though. So it's, uh, it's all learning experiences for me. It's worth it for me. I make videos on them and stuff. And so it's no big deal. But uh, hopefully I can make it less confusing for other people in the future so I'm trying to remember what's been confusing for me hopefully it's exactly the same things confusing for other people and I can explain it better so in any case thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video